Hey Beach Kids! I'm Ellie. And I'm Becca. And this month in Promised Land, we're learning all about a special delivery. A series all about generosity. We're learning to give because God gave to us first. Now, let's, let's drive, drive to, to worship. worship.
Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey friends, I'm Caleb and I'm excited to share this with you. It's my Bible, which is an absolutely incredible gift. God inspired dozens of faithful followers over hundreds of years to record these words, both for people then and for us today. In the Bible, you'll find history, uh, wisdom, poetry, songs, letters, and so much more. All of it speaks of God's deep, deep love for us and leads to Jesus who came to heal our brokenness and restore us to relationship with God. It's the most amazing display of generosity ever. And I've got four stories that can show us what it looks like. We're gonna get started in the book of James. <laughs> and the James who wrote this letter is believed to be Jesus's brother. As a leader of the early church, he wanted to encourage the scattered Jewish believers. And he tells them, every good and perfect gift is from God. The sunshine outside, that great orange you had at lunch, every breath you take, all of it, every single good thing in your life comes special delivery straight from God. Now we hop back to the Old Testament and the book of First Kings. Here, famine has gripped the land of Israel and the prophet Elijah has nothing to eat. So God sends him to a poor widow who has little food left herself. When Elijah asks for lunch, she could just send him on his way. Instead, she sets the table. That's when God rolls out the unlimited breadsticks special. Time to head back to the New Testament and the book of 2 Corinthians. Go. In this letter to the believers in Corinth, Paul reminds them of this important truth. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. God loves a cheerful giver. Generosity isn't just about what you give. It's about how you do it. Time to wrap up now in the book of 1 John. Here, Jesus' friend John clues us in to the true reason we can give. We know what love is because Jesus Christ gave his life for us. So we should give our lives for our brothers and sisters. Don't just talk about love, put your love into action. Jesus gave up his life for us. He made a way for us to be restored to relationship with God. It's the ultimate gift and the reason that we can freely give God's love to those around us. That's what true generosity looks like. And I can't wait to see how it shows up in you and me. Oh, oh. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're taking a look at the source of every single good gift. Who's this from? Hmm. The plot thickens. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. This month, we're talking about how God's generosity gives us a reason to give to others. So what's up with the giant special delivery box? I don't know. It was on the doorstep when I came. And check this out. <clears throat> To Skylar and Sebastian. Uh, who's it from? Not a clue. Oh, I love surprises. Open, open, open. Hmm. There's a note. 
Ahem. The festive season has just begun, so now it's time to make something fun. A surprise challenge. Got sticks. sticks. Leaves. Flowers. Flowers. Ooh, this smells good. Uh, ooh, seashells. Another flower. Oh, wait, can we eat these? Wait, I need something. Why are they called nutcrackers if you can't crack nuts with them? We're supposed to make something with all this stuff, not eat it. I... Well, what else is in here? Ooh, I know what to do with these. Is it fun? Oh yeah. Let's make it. Today, we're going to turn fire green. What? I am so in. We need these pine cones and a couple of other things. Isopropyl alcohol, also known as rubbing alcohol, copper sulfate, a bowl, a lighter, gloves, and I think that's about it. Okay, put one pine cone in a bowl. Step one, pour the isopropyl alcohol over the top of the pine cone. Aha, alcohol is flammable. Which means it can catch on fire and burn easily. Step two, sprinkle the copper sulfate over the pine cone. This is going to give us the green glow we're looking for. And step three, pour just a little more isopropyl alcohol for good measure. Step four. Outside. Good idea. Three, two, two one. one. So cool. Kind of mesmerizing. When the copper is heated, the electrons absorb heat energy. After a time, these lose the extra energy, releasing it in the form of green light. Different elements make different colors too. We could add sodium for yellow and sulfur for blue. Who knew the humble pine cone could do so much? You can even eat them. Really? You want to boil it first or just eat the seeds. Huh. Pine cones, the gift that keeps on giving. Which reminds me, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of James. James was written by, you guessed it, James. But this James just happened to be Jesus' half-brother. James didn't follow Jesus at first. But after Jesus returned to life, James believed in him. And you know if Jesus' own brother believed, it's real. James became a leader of the early church in Jerusalem. He wrote this letter to the Jewish believers to help them understand it's not only important to have faith, but to put that faith into action. It all begins with understanding just how much God has given us. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. James wrote just one small book of the Bible and it is packed with short, punchy statements that are basically mic drop moments. Today's verse is no exception. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Mic drop, there it is. In fact, I bet we can memorize this right now. So say it with me. Every good and perfect gift is from God. One more time. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Great! Now that's locked in your brain, let's unpack what it means. See, whatever is good in your life, from the tiniest thing to the most amazing thing, comes from God. Imagine that all the good things you have are wrapped up in a box. It's easy to look at someone else and feel like they have more than you. But the truth is, you will always have less than some people and more than others. The important thing is to stay focused on what God has given you. And God's most amazing gifts to you are not ones that you can rip off the paper to open up. First of all, God has given you life 
And every single breath you take, God is literally holding you together. God's given you people to love you and care for you. And God made everything we have to eat too. And there's so much more. God created this incredible world for you to live in. Beautiful forests, rushing rivers, and sky forever. All kinds of creatures from adorable to awe-inspiring. There's no end to what gifts we can discover in God's incredible creation. Next up, no matter who you are or where you live, God also promises the gift of help. When you are in trouble and you don't know what to do, God's help is always there for you. God might give you wisdom through the words of scripture or guidance as you talk with a trusted adult. You may simply have a strong feeling that God is with you, even if what's happening around you doesn't change right away. And then there's the biggest good gift of all time, the gift that we celebrate every Christmas, the gift we celebrate every Easter, the gift of God's very own Son, Jesus. No matter who you are, where you are, or what you've done, Jesus is for you. When we follow Jesus, our relationship with God is restored. And we can know that no matter what's happening now, God will make everything right in the end. As James wrote, every good and perfect gift is from God. Everything from this amazing world, to help and guidance, to your actual life, comes from God. And when you remember that, you can look forward to opening those gifts in new ways every single day. The end. So I know all the good stuff in my life is from God, but it's really easy to forget. Yeah. I get stuck on thinking about what I don't have rather than what I do have. Well, we all need a wake-up call sometimes. So, what's our part in the story? It's our job to remember and pay attention to all the amazing things that our generous God has given to us. You can start out your day asking, God, help me see all your gifts. Once we remember to look, those gifts are everywhere. That awesome sunrise you get to see on the way to school. When your teacher sees you're struggling and gives you some help. Ooh, pizza on the lunch menu. Your kitten chasing its tail. A sense of peace and calm when you sit down to take your math test. Every single one of those things and a million more. They're all reminders of God's generosity. Generosity is making someone's day by giving something away. And the more you start to see God's generosity to you, the more you can begin to share those good gifts with the people around you. That sounds like a win-win to me. Absolutely. It's been a gift to hang out with all of you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. God gives us good things. Like friends and food. Air to breathe. Oh, and all the stuff in our special delivery box. All gifts from God. You mean God left the box? I think someone else helped. <sighs> this gift has got me pining for the outdoors. Ah, ah. Want to make something else? Naturally. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. I wish I was surfing on one of those waves right now. Boop.
together. All right? Y'all ready? Just like this. Do the good part, get down. It's the good part, get down. If you had a good time and you want to come back, somebody scream. And do the good part, get down. Come on, it's the good part, get down. Now somebody, anybody, everybody sing. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye. We gotta go. We'll see you again. Oh, come on. Goodbye.